my number. Hello to Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Good. How okay. are you uh, today? Fine. Fine. Now, wait a minute. You're building 12. Yes, Demolished, building 12, gone. apartment L. So are, you, are you... the fire. Tell me what happened that night. Oh, I was... Uh, at, I think it was right before 12. I was on the phone talking to my girlfriend who was going to leave for Florida the next morning and telling her goodbye. The first thing that happened is the phone went dead. About mm. one second later, the light... Uh, the sky just lit up totally orange like a nuclear explosion. Hey, Jeff, as you say it, and I'm so far removed, I just got that feeling of chills up the body. Uh, it, it, it really, the closest thing that you could imagine is like a nuclear explosion. It just, the, the total sky went red. I had my curtain shut, too. So you have to imagine through the curtains, it looks like daylight or, now, or more like a Did you dark. hear the explosion no, or the roar? No, you didn't hear it yet. It, it, then about two or three seconds later, you hear the, the explosion and the roar and it sounds just like either a, a freight train or a uh i don't know just a tremendous roar of, wind, of wind of wind and uh the first thing you do is you don't know what to do right and i sat there and i uh i didn't really sit I, I, well of course the the next thing that happened was the power went off mm. uh, that went off when mm -hmm. the phone did but it's so bright in the rooms where there's oh, windows gosh, that it looks terrible. like broad daylight mm -hmm. So then I stayed in there, and I was trying to make another phone, tried, actually tried to call her back so she could call the police or something, that something had happened. Uh, right then going, to, but it got so bad in the rooms at the windows, I figured the windows would be blown in on me and things like that, so I ran into Wait, the... Wait, slow it up, Jeff. You okay, say fine. it got so bad in the room with the windows. You mean the heat? The wind, it was starting to get a little warm, and uh, the it was just a lot of wind. You know, it, hasn't, it hadn't broken the windows yet, mm. but... I n and, oh, debris. Debris was hitting the sides of the building. Oh. I could hear the debris hitting the sides of the buildings. And <sighs> I thought the only uh, safe place is the bathroom because there's no windows. And it was the farthest from... Like you had your wits with you? You know how sometimes you get so nervous you can't even think straight? Uh, well, I had no I had my wits with me. I so you went to the bathroom? The bathroom because it has no windows. Uh, oh. You know, I knew... How come you didn't get out? You figured you were safe Well, I, did, I knew what was out there was out there, and it was very right. large. I mean, exactly. I, I had an impression, I mean, if you can picture of how big mm. something is, you know, if it took up a little bit of space mm. in the window, it was a small fire. This was so large oh. that I knew that it could engulf the build. It was, I knew it was much, much larger. So you're alone building. in your apartment, alone building in my 12. Apartment. You'd get right into the bathroom then Okay. What? I, I knew what was out there was big enough to uh, swallow the building in one bite and that it would, uh, mm. you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it was just that big. I, I, and I figured, actually, if I went outside, I'd, I'd melt. I actually thought oh. that I would catch on fire and melt because I heard, and I heard things hitting the building, so I knew I could be, you know, hit by one of these things. So I ran into the bathroom mm. and uh, laid on the floor and was saying, dear God, dear God, dear God. And I figured uh -huh. what would happen was it was an explosion that it would die down. Mm. Well... It never died down. So I opened the door again, looked out, and it's still, uh, you know, going on. This time, the windows have already gone. The windows have blown mm. out. Stuff's blowing around mm. the room. And um, I shut the door again, and I'm thinking, well, I'm going to end up in, down three, down in the basement impelled on a stake, you know. At uh, that point, Jeff, did, when you were saying, dear God, and obviously praying at that time, did you say to yourself, this is it? I thought very likely it could be. I thought it could be because uh, it was so large that I... It, it, I didn't know what it was. Jeff, it, please stay with me. Don't okay. don't go anywhere. Okay. Jeff from, from Building 12 is on the line. He is telling us a fascinating, terrifying story about he got how he got out in time. Jeff, take us from the point where you were in the bathroom uh, okay, deciding what to do next. Okay, you can hear me now? Yes. Okay, fine. It, the whole time this was going on, the apartment was shaking. How many minutes? Minutes? Uh, seconds? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you... The Probably from the time that the first uh, explosion to the time I got out was, I would say, three to five minutes. Um, anyway, so it was totally shaking, and I mm. poked my I, I really felt the place was going to collapse. I you were know. in the bathroom. I was in the bathroom, and I felt like the place would collapse. But like I said, what was outside was throwing stuff up against mm. the building, and it was mm. even bigger than, you know, I didn't know what it was. It was almost like the end of the world out there, or like I said, maybe... I actually thought of a gas explosion. I also tell thought me, of a, a nuclear bomb. Mm -hmm. So then I poked my head out again, and I, and I realized, like, about this time the windows are broken, and the roof is starting to fall a little bit in. So I thought, well, you know, I can't stay here forever. It's going to, uh, you know, no, no fireman's going to come rescue me, and the, fire, and the fire's not going out. So I, Did you hear any yelling in the nothing, unit? You could hear nothing but nothing. The, the roar of the fire. Uh. So then I... Uh, got out just long enough to grab a pair of running shoes because I was barefoot and I pulled them back into the bathroom with me and into the pitch black dark of the bathroom and I put them on and uh, I, I think I by this time I when I went out uh, it was the building was starting to smoke I could smell smoke 
and smoke, smoke was like actually starting to fill up the ceiling of the uh, place, so I knew it was like time to go. So I uh, turned, the water still worked. So I turned on the water in the shower, and I climbed under the shower, and I got soaked from head to toe, and uh, because I felt like really when I went outside, I'd be burned to death. And I didn't really expect there, I felt like I'm on the third floor, the stairs were wooden. I felt like I'd be jumping three flights. Uh, down three floors into now, a fire what, or running or you, something. You certainly had your wits about you, but why did you feel by getting soaking wet that would change it? Because I, I, I knew the place was burning down. I could feel the, the heat. I smelled the smoke. Uh, the room when I was out there before was a third full of smoke, the th a third of the way down. When I, then I got a wet towel and I put it over my face. And when I opened the door again, it, for the first time, I couldn't see the fire outside. The whole place was black. And I crawled on my hands and knees to the door, and I uh, found the door. I felt that it was warm, but I said, you know, warm, hot, whatever, you got to open it. So I opened it up, and to my amazement, the stairs were there. I mean, I didn't look for the fire because it was too bright. Mm -hmm. I looked the other way. It was bright as could be when you opened the door. And I looked the other way, and the stairs were there. I didn't have to jump. I didn't have to jump into fire, which was a total shock to me. Thank and you. I ran out, and as I ran across the parking lot, I saw cars just melted. Uh, they were, you know, the, the tires were melted, the gla all the glass was broken out of the car windows. Did you see other people? Oh, I saw the first person as I got down the steps, um, and he was running. But I, uh, my area either had been long evacuated, or I don't know, but there was only one person in my area when I ran out. And then as I ran toward the exit, there were more and more people. Did you actually see your building blow up after oh, that? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, it was on fire when I left. And I, you like, just oh, took when off I, when on I foot? Through, when I crawled through my apartment, the curtains were burning. So I know that mm -hmm. it burned. I've since found out it burned to the ground, but I knew it was going to burn anyway. I, when I left, I left the door wide open, and uh, then I ran, and people were jumping into cars. And I What did you do? I ran and jumped into a guy's car. And took off? And, it, yes, he drove me da uh, down to North Brunswick to my girlfriend's house. Do you really, uh, when this is, uh, once you got into that car and you're driving, what in God's name could you say to the person you're driving with? What do you do? Are you in a so, uh, speechless? Him, you're, you're just like, uh, you just want to get into somebody's car, and somebody jumped into the one before But me. I'm imagining you driving with the stranger to your girlfriend's house. Is there any conversation? Oh, or are you a total conversation. I said, he asked me where, I, I said, I was just in Building 12. And, and there's I, no I, discussion as to what the hell this is. <laughs> well, you could, well, by then you can turn around and look, because you're far enough away from the fire, and I, see, I saw how big the flames were then. And uh, I said, where are you going? And, and he told me he was leaving to go somewhere. And I said, well, I want to go anywhere as far away from here as possible. And when he said something about, well, he may not, he may be going a different way, or he may, if he was going to stop, there was a lot of traffic. And when he stopped, I asked him, are you continuing to go? Because if not, I'm getting out and running. Because I really just wanted to be as far, far, far away as possible. And uh, when we got down to North Brunswick, uh, let's say an hour later, it, we watched, the, you could see the fire for, you know, three hours. So Jeff, where are you now? I'm down in North Brunswick at my girlfriend's house. Do you need any of these services? Uh, only, the I, I'm going to go by and... Uh, You're a strong person, Jeff. Well, thanks. But I tell you, you have to be then. You know, it makes you really think about a and lot And I of can tell from your accent, you're not from this area. I'm from Alabama originally. Alabama. Did you ever witness anything even close to this? Uh, no, and I'll tell you, I probably never will again. And like I said, you, you don't, I didn't know if it was a nuclear bomb or was it the end of the world or what, but it, is so, it was so large, like, you just knew that it was Jeff, very major. <laughs> there's a reason you're alive today, and thank you so much. I'm so glad you got out of it. Oh, me and you both. Bye, Jeff. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.